try mentions to you, to you both. Maka, try uh, moment? The try, yeah. Special? <laughs> yeah. You are making history here in the Rugby League World Cup. We are glad for this. The, the girl who scored the try is, is actually, she well deserves it. She's quite a, uh, she's come from basically not understanding the sport at all to a, a player that's that's quite handy at any part of the field. She's good. And the, the conversion attempt was extra degree of difficulty, don't yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could have done with less. She could have been proved and I'll talk to her about it. <laughs> what, what did you make of generally of the performance? Oh, look, I can't say I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm very happy with the girls. They put it all in right from the, the start to the finish. Um, again, uh, we made a, a lot of little errors, uh, and there was probably, uh, I think England spotted pretty on, early on that we had an issue with the edge, but uh, we will repair that. Were you at all surprised by the intensity today? Um, uh, was he taking a surprise at the intensity of it was tough, really tough, but I think we are we are prepared to to the game, so we are focused in the next game now. It was tough, but we are tough too. <laughs> um, I, I think the intensity, uh, France gave us a good warm-up, but uh, England were definitely the next level, and, and hats off to the English side. They, they played quite well. Um, they were organised and uh, very sharp. Uh, they certainly showed experience that we don't have. But uh, in saying that, as I said, I'm not disappointed with the girls. What do you focus on? Obviously From here, uh, yeah. we'll make a few changes. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely stiffen up our edge. Uh, we have been working uh, a bit with edge uh, defence, a fair bit with edge defence. Um, it kind of uh, went out of the girls' heads today. Uh, a lot of the girls play in sevens. Uh, they're used to scramble defence more so than, than organised defence. Um, and there was a little bit of uh, not pushing out from the middle and a little bit of um, people getting excited and uh, jamming in. Yeah. But that's, that's all with time experience. We'll, we'll work pretty hard in that area. And full time you all did the dive on the pitch, <laughs> dancing to the, to the Calypso drums and stuff. So it must feel like an achievement to have gone through the 80 minutes and, and you're there, you've played one World Cup game. Does it feel like it's worth something worth celebrating? You know? What can I explain? Because it's our first time in Rugby League World Cup. It's an honor represents Brazil and South America. So our history here is it's just beginning. It's a special moment for us. So it doesn't matter the score for the game. We are happy. So that's it. <laughs> Were you able to see the fans and, and hear them? I mean, they were small, but they were pretty loud. <laughs> we tried to make contact with most of the fans <laughs> along the way. Um, some of them uh, got uh, uh, passes from us, uh, obviously, but uh, there were some there that sort of surprised us and a lot of little kids with uh, green, and, uh, green and gold. It was really good to see. Yeah. You, you probably heard Craig say that he sees your match against Canada as... 50-50-ish. I mean, that must, that's a huge sort of statement given yeah. they've only played, ever played three games. Is, yeah. is that a realistic target? Oh, look, we're going to move forward. I, I think, honestly, I think we'll have a good crack against Papua New Guinea as well. Um, but Canada are, are a team that um, I, I think will be an enjoyable game and it will be uh, it will be fairly even. We certainly uh, we're not going to go home and bury our heads after this. I think the girls... Um, Gave a lot with that. Uh, they're the sort of people that celebrate life. Uh, they certainly taught me a lot, but uh, they uh, they do um, uh, a bit on their phones, like TikToking and things like that. <laughs> but uh, you can see how they celebrate. This is not practiced. We haven't spoken to them about this. This is literally the way they are. They just enjoy life. It's it's beautiful. Are you going to be saw on social media about you eating the food? The mushy peas and. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you more? see? Yeah, have got any more plans to eat any more of those kinds of things? It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we found a, a lamb shepherd's pie in a pub close to us, so we're going to head there. Yeah. I want the girls to experience some good lamb. You can't get it in Brazil. Did oh, everyone come through okay unscathed? Is there any injuries to your squad? There was no major injuries to the squad that I'm aware of. I was going to say, who particularly impressed you for England, and do you think they have a squad capable of potentially challenging Australia and going all the way? 
Yeah, look, it's a big call Australia. Uh, the girls play in a very high-level competition, but uh, the, what England displayed tonight was just excellent. I think the coach uh, speaking about um, stepping back and playing a more secure game is, is probably the best way. Uh, if, he can, if they can do that, they can build on it. Probably your most impressive for, for me were the seven and the one. Uh, I thought they were both quite good and found inroads on us uh, when we didn't expect it. Um, I think, uh, uh, I'm not sure of her first name, Miss Hard Castle. Amy. She, Amy, yeah, she, she had a good hard crack. I, I thought she was good. When she hit the ball, she was hard to stop. But Margaret got it twice, so. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little, a little bit more about your try score at Lomberg? How long has she been playing? And uh, look, uh, Natalie came... From? She's from uh, she's from the south, uh, pretty much in South Poland. North. Really? She's from North Brazil. Okay. Yeah, but she lives in the west. Yeah, she lives in the west. Yeah. She um, she actually uh, she came along to a few um, few earlier parts, and look, uh, Rob uh, Rob Bergen and I we did a lot of selection uh, with video um, because of the size of the country. Oh and also the ability to get over during COVID and that. We had games uh, where we watched girls and they were often filmed from the sideline with a, uh, a phone. Uh, so uh, uh, Natalie actually appeared in about two minutes of, uh, of film that we had. Uh, we spotted her about six times and it was like, who passed that? Who did that tackle? Who did this? Who did that? And she, she came to us with basic skills, uh, but um, we've... we've we haven't had to work hard on her. She's worked hard on us. She's been really a girl that deserves the try. Yeah. yeah. I saw to the girls in the half time. I want to see someone, for uh, someone from us in the screen, and we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> You've spoken about the significance of Brazil being in this World Cup. What does it mean for the next generation of boys and girls in Brazil watching? Uh, our development program for next year is, is going straight into schools, so this is fantastic. We'll have a bunch of ambassadors to tow around with us and uh, kids over there, once they get a ball in their hands and start running with it, it it's something different for them and they all they all really take to it. Was the game on television back home? Yes. Uh, no, they could see it through uh, an app, I believe. What? Uh, Jogo Fui no Televisão. Brazil? Si. No, I think just for the app. Not on the, not on broadcast. No, sorry, yeah. it was just through an app. Uh, it would have been good to uh, to be broadcast, but um, uh, I think uh, we'll be good enough that we uh, get some nods out of people who who got into the app. Thanks,